All right, everybody, this is Ross. We just went around and did a little harvest outside. It's really humid. It's pretty dark, as you guys can probably tell. I turned up the, uh, the brightness on the camera as much as I could, but it really is gonna rain here any minute. So I'm inside the sunroom. We harvested a lot of different things. Uh, tomatoes, had a whole bowl of tomatoes just like this. Um, also went around and did a little bit of the, the last little bit of corn that we had, some zucchini, some cucumbers, carrots and beets, and um, some brassicas. I'm gonna blend those, I'm gonna juice them actually, and, uh, and drink some beet and, and carrot juice later today. But I also did a little harvest of figs because before rain, that rain that comes in, it's really a good idea to harvest your, your tomatoes because they split. Uh, once the rain gets inside the uh, tomato, it ruins it. Same thing with the fig, is that once the fig opens up, it cracks, it splits at the bottom where the eye is, it's ruined. So I'd like to do a harvest before the rain. Unfortunately, this is just what you gotta deal with. When you're growing figs in this climate with the rain, if you wanna eat the figs, it's probably better to pick them before the rain. Um, Cause after a rain, and it's gonna rain for three days. It's not like it's just one little short shower here. This is like, it's gonna rain most of today uh, into tomorrow and then even on um, the following day. So, you know, it's, it just is what it is. And, and what I'm trying to do here with this tasting, I mean, I did, I already sort of did, but the audio wasn't working at the time. We did a, a little bit of a tasting here because I've got varieties like Moscatel Preto, Villa de Bordeaux, Paradiso Bode, Col de Dom Blancanegra, Black Madeira, De La Senora Hibernanca, Socorro Black. So there's a lot of genetics here. There's a lot of really tasty varieties. And I was comparing them in terms of flavor and texture and all that. But really the only comparison that you should be thinking about here is not the flavor, it's not the texture. I mean, it's pretty much, will I be able to get this fig to ripe to perfection? Uh, because I could make an argument, and I do, I make an argument here in, in that tasting we just did that you guys didn't get to see, was that this fig here, it's called Paradiso from Bode. It's probably one of the very tastiest figs I have. I would argue it's just as good as this Black Madeira. And uh, I think it's actually a five out of five. Today I was really impressed by this variety. So for me, I thought, wow, that's great, but it splits like every time. And for me to even get it at this rightness, I got really lucky. I got extremely lucky because normally it's been raining the last couple of weeks and that's normal, you know? And I talk a lot about the hang time on this channel. How long does it have to hang on the tree before it's perfectly ripe or it's ripe to where you would wanna pick it. And this fig here needs about six days before it's perfectly ripe or it's, to the ripeness that you'd want it at. I don't even know what perfectly ripe is for this variety because I've never been able to pick it perfectly ripe. Black Madeira is the same thing. I actually had to pick this one a bit too soon today because it's split and the rain's coming in. So if it's split and it's gonna rain, I mean, that's like the worst combination right there. Uh, this needs about six or seven days. Ideally, it's like a 10 day fig. If you can get this thing hanging on the tree for even longer, it's gonna be even better but it's still good at six days. Other varieties I have here, like this De La Senora Hibernenka, this guy takes only three or four days. I would say five or six days for it to be perfectly ripe. But at day four, you're really gonna enjoy this. And this is day three and I ate it and it was actually quite good. So that's incredible because what happens is with these varieties and their hang time, six days is a lot of time for something to happen to a fig, right? Of course, the first couple days after it starts to swell, almost nothing's gonna happen to it. But as the fig progressively gets more ripe and progressively hangs the longer on the tree, something more and more is gonna likely happen, right? So the De La Senora on day one and day two, nothing's gonna happen. On day three and day four, it's edible. The sugar content's there. And then at that point, you may get some problems with rain or critters or insects that could bother this. Although it's pretty unlikely uh, because it's only four days. You're only having it on there for four days 
which two of the four days it's susceptible to the environment. Whereas the Black Madeira, the Paradiso, four of the six days or four of the, or five of the seven days, depending on how long you want to have this on there for, you know, it, it's just more susceptible. Statistically, more things are going to happen to it. Um, I probably could have let this variety here, Socorro Black, hang on the tree a bit longer as I didn't realize that these were not ripe just yet. And you'll notice on the back, some of them are starting to turn this browner color. So if you pick them a bit early when the back, the skin is very yellow, uh, very light in color, it's just not going to be perfectly ripe. Ideally, you got to wait about, I think, eight-ish days with this variety before they're totally dark, before uh, they start to get some nice cracking in them, and then they're they're perfect. Villette de Bordeaux is about a six or seven day fig as well, but it can really hold up to the rain for more of those days than not, which is good. So it does up to a point, we did a video on Villette de Bordeaux um, talking about how Villette de Bordeaux actually does mold. It does get some green mold. So if it, there's a lot of humidity, there's a lot of rain and it cracks or it has an open eye, which some of them do, um, you will end up getting some mold in those areas. And that's not pleasant. You don't want to eat that. So although I would argue it really does hold up well to the rain, it doesn't mold. So what I'm sort of looking for here is a variety that will either one, be able to completely avoid the rain completely by having a very low hang time as the De La Senora has, or I want to have a variety that can just withstand the rain and I don't have to worry about it. And there's really only a couple varieties that can withstand the rain better than this Villa de Bordeaux. And those would probably be something like the Hardy Chicago types, Celeste types, um, Neruciola de Elba, Verdino del Nord, Sucret. Uh, varieties that really dry well and dry easily on the tree. If, you, if they have superior drying capabilities, they're going to do phenomenal. Um, I also have here a variety called uh, Moscatel Preto, which this year it's been very, very large, this fig. It's also been rather tasty, but the issue is getting them perfectly ripe, is that I can't necessarily get them perfect, and as a result, it just kind of stinks. Um, a big fig, caramel flavor to it. Again, great flavor, right? A lot of these varieties here that I'm ripening, that I have in front of me, are big names. Big name figs. I have a Col de Nam, I have Black Madeira, I have Paradiso from Bode, which isn't necessarily a big name. Socorro Black has a big name. So of these varieties, really only one or two of them, I would say, is solid. So it doesn't matter how good they taste. That was my intention, was to do a tasting compare the flavors, which I did, which we didn't get on camera, but you know, that was my intention. But throughout that video, I realized, well, is that really all that important? What they taste like? Because in this current moment, as I said, the Paradiso Bode is the best one, but it's in all honesty, not the best one, probably 90% of the time. You know, nine, I would say like 75% of the time, I'm not able to ripen that fig to perfection. So if I have 100 figs on the tree, I'm only going to get about 25 that are actually perfectly ripe. And when they're perfectly ripe, then I could say it's a 5 out of 5. Then I could say it has a good flavor, has a good texture. Black Madeira is quite good right now, but it's not perfectly ripe. And I would say it's a 5 out of 5 normally when it's perfectly ripe. But in its current state right here, having to pick it early because it's split, it's probably only a four out of five. So for me, I'm like, all right, well, again, the flavor just isn't everything. There's other characteristics. What is it about these that are going to enable you in your climate to ripen them to perfection? And assuming that, that those are the figs that you want. So here's Moscatel Preto. I just want to go over and show you these varieties real quickly. And then we're gonna move on, I think, and close out this video. I just wanna leave you guys 
with uh, what these guys look like. There's Moscatel Preto. Here's Paradiso Bode, which was getting a five, a five out of five today. Very, very tasty, very dense flavor. Extremely good variety. Highly underrated, not talked about. I don't even know if anyone really has it. Here's Coladon Blanca Negra, wasn't right. Had to pick it early. Although, probably could have let it hang for a bit longer. But three days of rain, I mean, three days of a consistent rain, any fig that's on the tree is gonna basically be destroyed unless it has ridiculous drying capabilities like Neruciola de Elba and Verdino del Nord. Here's Black Madeira from UC Davis, the first one of the year. Here's the De La Senora. Hi, Vernenka. Another underrated, not talked about fig, but Hopefully that's going to change. Here's Violette de Bordeaux. The standard. We did a separate video on this. We also did a separate video on the uh, De La Senora Hivernenka. And again, here is the Socorro Black. Just not perfectly ripe just yet, but you can really see that potential in there. It's really quite interesting. And the back is more lighter skinned. You got to wait till they turn dark. Another Moscatel Preto that they're huge this year, but that size is not helping them. They split, they get lots of cracks in them, and in all honesty, I'm just not a big fan of that fig anymore. Uh, for all the reasons I mentioned in this video is that, yeah, it could be a very good fig when it's perfectly ripe, but I have other figs that will ripen here to perfection consistently like that De La Senora Hivernenka. So thank you guys here so much for watching this one. Take care. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. See you guys soon.